There is an old saying with which we are all familiar. Many hands make light work. And there's much truth in those words. Now, although some people believe in another saying, that if I want something done well, I got to do it myself. Most of us, most of us will realize that great ideas and great vision and great needs to be fulfilled require many hands. The apostles recognized that fact in the early church. In chapter 6 of the Acts of the Apostles, which we heard as our second reading today, we read that the Twelve quickly became overwhelmed by their responsibility to preach the gospel. So much so that other needs among the community of faith as it grew were being neglected, especially, especially the need for charity, charity put before them. Greater love than this, no man had than to give his life for his friend. It's a strong endorsement of our responsibility to be charitable. You know, it's comforting to, for me as bishop to realize that even in the early church, people complained. <laughs> Likewise, it's also good to learn that their legitimate complaints didn't go unheeded. The Twelve summoned together the community of faith and they wanted to develop a response to their needs, you know, what we would call maybe a strategic plan, to meet the church's need. And the results of their prayer and deliberations and discussions have traveled through time and history to the present moment here in our cathedral. This morning, we come together, all of us, the community of faith that is the Diocese of Trenton, we come together to meet the needs of the church through the ordination of 13 deacons, men of great faith, who in their lives have discerned God's call in the church, who have studied and prepared themselves, and who now offer themselves to me as bishop, a successor to the apostles, for ordination to ministry in the church in a permanent and enduring way. The Acts of the Apostles tells us that the early church chose seven men. Well, here in Jersey, we doubled it and added one. <laughs> As bishop, I want to thank you. I want to thank you sincerely, you men who have come forward. I want to thank you for your great generosity a generosity that you share with your wives and with your family, with your pastors who are here and your priests in the parishes as you give yourselves to the diocese as deacons. You join the ranks of many good men who are here today and who are throughout the diocese. And these men, like you, have assumed the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as we heard it in the opening prayer. I have come to serve and not to be served. Words familiar to me. While your bishop may have chosen those words as his own Episcopal motto, he is the first to admit that it's only with the help of priests and deacons and consecrated women and men and the community of all the baptized faithful, that those words, that service can be fulfilled. Many hands. For the gift you are, my brothers, and for all the gifts that you bring to share, I thank you, and the entire diocese thank you. Of course, the ministry that today becomes your own as members of the ordained clergy is more than to serve at table. It's chronicled in the Acts of the Apostles. You are ordained and assigned for the Diocese of Trenton to the ministry of God's word, to the ministry of the altar, 
to the ministry of the charity, working with me, your bishop, and with the pastors and priests of the parishes to which I have assigned you. You know, fellas, yours is not a personal or individual ministry. Although you bring unique personal and individual gifts to it, and to your identity as deacons. Yours is not a ministry confined to the boundaries of your parish alone. No, yours is a ministry of the church, in the church, for the church in our diocese. And in the words of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, your call makes no sense apart from the church, one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. It is not possible to find Jesus, our Holy Father has said, outside of the church. To think otherwise is simply foolish. And so, my dear sisters and brothers, especially those of you who are to be ordained, let us listen to the instruction that our church gives in its ritual for the ordination of deacons. 